Hi everybody, Bright Garlic here and welcome to the first video in the Alienology 101 video series. In this video I want to talk a little bit about the concept of definitions. And to start with, there goes my definitions. To start with I thought I'd like to just ask the question, uh, what do we mean when we say alien? What do we mean when we say extraterrestrial? What do we mean by these things and how do we communicate what we mean by these things? I'm not really sure of those answers but I, I just wanted to ask that question and ask you uh, what does alien mean to you? What does extraterrestrial mean to you? And, and what does it mean when somebody communicates using those words? So I thought I'd just ask the question and I wanted to give you uh, some brief definitions and first I wanted to say this as human beings we use language to communicate and language is not something that exists in isolation. Language comes through many different filters and those filters basically reflect our conditioning and that includes things like our family of origin and our nationality and our culture and the specific language that we use associated with that nationality or that culture. And so to use one word that we think has universal meaning to everybody can sometimes be a mistake because that word is very heavily culturally biased and we can be biased towards certain words thinking that we're communicating clearly with somebody when in fact we're using a word that has very specific cultural meanings and those meanings are lost sometimes or mistranslated across cultures. So in this whole area of alienology, ufology, um, contact, whatever we want to call it, exopolitics, there are many different words that we're going to use that mean one thing to one person and another thing to another person, one thing to one culture and another thing to another culture. So my primary language, my only language, is the English language. I'm an Australian and I use the internet a lot. So those are my primary influences and English is the language that I'm most comfortable with even though I can talk a little of some other languages. So I'm familiar with the concept of alien and extraterrestrial. And I just wanted to, to start with some basic definitions. Alien. Life not originating from Earth. Extraterrestrial. Being from beyond planet Earth. And if you look at the Latin for uh, extra, that means outside, and terrestrial means earthly. So, hence from beyond planet Earth. So those are two simple definitions that we use a lot when we talk about these concepts. And I guess uh, in recent years since the development of the internet, certainly since the early 90s, people have been talking about all kinds of other concepts to basically mean the same thing. Um, and we use alien and extraterrestrial kind of interchangeably to mean the same thing. And many people use uh, the concept of um, dimensionality um, to describe aliens. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the next video when I talk about intradimensional and interdimensional. But I would like to suggest that what we're trying to do here is communicate. We're trying to communicate from one person to another. I'm trying to communicate from me to you. And if we're going to be able to communicate across cultural boundaries and across national boundaries, 
And even the boundaries that exist between people, people who come from different uh, backgrounds, people who come from different uh, education, people who come from different socioeconomic groups, I think what we really need to do is remember that the essence of all of what we're trying to do is communicate. We are not trying to capture precisely what these apparent entities, physical or otherwise, are, even though I think it's within the scope of how we are as human beings to try and describe these entities, I think we need to keep our descriptive phrases very simple because this is really all about communication. And so I've talked about some of the encounters that I've had with the Telia and the tall aliens and Salen and some of the other groups. And I've more often than not described them as aliens and said they're our alien friends. And it may be inaccurate to say that they are aliens, you know, that they are beings that did not originate on this earth or from beyond earth, if you go by that, that simple English definition. It may be inaccurate. I'm not sure. I don't think it is in particular uh, in relation to most of the races that I'll ever talk about. And I'm not sure that it's inaccurate for us to use those terms for any other races visiting our planet. I'm not sure that there are beings visiting our planet who originate from here. I'm going to come back to that because, uh, yeah, I can think of an exception. But for the most part, um, I will describe entities as aliens. And I think people have got to be careful not to get too caught up on the, you know, on being politically correct or on the syntax. Because what we're trying to do is just convey something that I understand or somebody else understands to somebody else. You know, we're trying to convey a very basic meaning of something to one another. So I would encourage you not to get caught up in in defining things too much. Not unless, of course, we know exactly uh, what these entities are. Now, I sometimes refer to them as a specific race. And I think race is really a very human term. And we could also talk about specific species. And I think once again, you know, these are things that fall into the human uh, taxonomic classification systems. Um, some of you will remember from your biology classes. Now let me see if I can rattle this off. I'm not sure. Um, Kingfield classed ordinary um, families as generous and special. So kingdom, file and genus, species, and so on. You know, we have this um, Linnaeus classification system that serves us reasonably well in terms of being able to categorize and classify and develop an understanding of relationships between different biological beings on our planet. I'm not sure that that particular system is going to be useful for us when it comes to, to looking at beings that are not from earth but for now it's what we have and so when we talk about different species of alien or a different race of alien i think that that we shouldn't get too caught up on on being perfect about that not unless we start to learn about specific planets or solar systems that these beings are from. And then there's another issue that we have to be aware of. And that's the issue that everything is relative. So when we talk about, you know, I, t I talk about, um, I refuse to, 
to name some of the different groups that I've had contact with because some of them are known and some of them come with what what is known comes with baggage and whether that baggage holds any truth or not is irrelevant it's there it's like a cultural filter so until such time as I'm told you can go ahead and use that and I'm, I've never been told that I can't it's just a feeling that I have that I shouldn't do that whereas the telia were very clear I say telia but it's spelled um, T-E-A L apostrophe H-I-A till here and I can't say it the way they say it but I was told quite clearly it was okay to describe them that way and now I believe that that is a name that the teal here use for themselves if they were to speak in the language of their origin I would not understand what they are saying and I couldn't convey it many of these r beings races appear to have a kind of telepathic communication that allows for like a universal translation so that we hear things in our own language in our minds but they can also speak our own language and our own dialects perfectly well I'm aware that uh, particular race speaks fluent Mandarin uh, and they were also able to speak the language of the Chinese some 3,000 years ago in perfect dialect. So when it comes to um, the names that some of these entities uh, that, that we use to describe some of these entities there's a couple of possibilities here. One is the names that they give us and those names may be specific for our race to know them by but another race might know them by some other name and it may be that some races use one name per se amongst all the races but you have to realize from race to race um, there are of course very different languages and mechanisms for communicating so that same name even may be translated very differently um, for example my name in Chinese obviously sounds different to Russian or um, an old language like Moldavian or you know, something like Hungarian or Inuit or whatever but it will translate into roughly the same thing but but for our alien friends I think it's much more complex than that so some of them may use the same name and some of them may use different names with different races and of course all the different translations could make any two names sound remarkably different or the same name sound remarkably different I, hope I haven't lost you <laughs> the other thing to consider is that we use different names to describe our alien friends and there will be people that use specific names and they may or may not have been given that 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 may be something they feel to be true and there will be other more generic names like um, I consider this a new age term but people who can who talk about the Pleiadians and the Andromedans well you know that's very vague you know the Pleiades is a cluster um, there is also the Andromeda cluster and also the Andromeda galaxy and you know there's, there's Andromeda galaxies so we have this whole uh, range of possibilities and it may be that people actually don't know the star system within the galaxy constellation or galaxy or the constellation and so they're just being very general or maybe it's just new age dribble and they haven't got a clue so we have all of these terms and all of this is, is being thrown into the mix and, and we're hearing this when you hear about people talking about contact with aliens. 
Now, some of what I just talked about is genuine and some of it's not. Some of it is going to be New Age or so-called channeled stuff that's just garbage that's adding to the mix and adding to people's confusion. And I anticipate that in time there'll be greater clarity about actual races and where they're from. But I think that all if all of this other uh, conjecture and kind of new age dribble, you know, we can't separate it off, we can't take it away, it's going to be there and it's going to add fluff to this very big nebulous cloud of names that aliens have. Even in talking about the Telia, I've since discovered that somebody else is now starting to talk about the Telia, and yet I know I was the first person to talk about them on the internet, as far as I could tell. And of course, every time you use a name that no one else has ever heard, it's it's going to take off in in some way, shape or form, to some degree. And so some of them, like the reptilians of David Icke, are going to really take off. Looks like I'm running out of battery, so I'm going to just connect the cable in and continue. Sorry about that, I thought this would be a short video, so I didn't bother recharging my battery. As I said, we have some um, concepts and terms, descriptions for aliens that have uh, basically become memes, if you like, and have taken off and have developed their own mythology and culture and so on. Whether or not that reflects any underlying reality, I'm not sure. Of course, there'll always be people who argue with that. So I think in considering aliens and how we describe them, we have all of these um, pieces of cultural baggage, all of these filters, and the internet really is is the greatest filter at the moment. It's whatever the mechanism for spreading ideas, whether we talk about memes or contagion or whatever. The internet is planting that seed and transmitting ideas, and language is the key here. And so the description of um, aliens is really heavily anchored to language. And what language lacks, I think, is the accuracy to describe things as they really are. So we have to be very conscious of that when we're talking about particular types or races of aliens. Now, in another video, I'll talk about categories of aliens such as um, reptoid, humanoid and so on. But I just wanted to add one more thing. One of the things that's been pointed out to me uh, during my contacts is that there are some races that come from uh, star systems within galaxies that we have uh, no real understanding of. Uh, there is a, a designation called the uh, the New General Catalogue of Nebula and Clusters of Stars. And I think there's somewhere in the order of 7,840 objects within that system. And there is another new system that follows up on that. And so some of the uh, aliens that we will meet come from star systems or galaxies that we've designated that way. So they don't have a name, you know, they don't have a beautiful elegant name like Andromeda. Uh, of course they have their own names for where they come from but we don't have a name. Now there are also uh, aliens from other places that we have never identified that, that we have not yet seen and we don't have names for and in time we'll learn more about that and I guess the last thing I wanted to say when it comes to thinking of this idea of uh, aliens you know it's, it's not the last thing I want to say but but I, I just want to make this last important point 
it's all relative. Um, we have a very good sense of our planet and we think we have a good sense of our solar system and where it sits in relation to other solar systems in the arm of the spiral, barred spiral, uh, Milky Way galaxy. But we're not really sure. We haven't been out there and we don't really have a good image of that. Whereas many of these uh, different races have travelled within this galaxy and beyond this galaxy and have a much better understanding of um, our, our place and their place relative to what we do. For us, conceiving of... Um, aliens and where aliens are from is limited to what we know about our galaxy and our universe. But for them, it's limited, of course, to what they know. And what they know, for many of them, is far beyond what we will ever know. And for some of them to try and describe where they are from in human terms is probably beyond our comprehension and while we think we can pinpoint and say oh okay they're from the Virgo, Virgo supercluster or you know they're from the outer edges of the fourth arm of the Milky Way galaxy you know we don't really have a good understanding of this stuff and we can't really comprehend the structure of our universe, let alone what that concept, concept of universe and cosmos actually mean. So for some of them to describe where they are from is going to be very difficult for us to really understand. I think it's difficult for them to explain to some of the other races that, that are off planet, but even more difficult for us I just wanted to talk about one last thing in this video and uh, and this might strike you as a little bit strange but I think it's a really important thing to try and remember whenever we hear people talking about aliens and I'm particularly conscious of this when people are talking about the so-called malevolent aliens and the um, insidious nature of aliens and how we can't trust aliens and aliens are out to get us and they're going to invade, all this kind of negativity that surrounds many of them. I've had close contact for much of my life with the person who worked with um, aliens that were based on Earth. She had a, a very varied role and I won't go into that except to say that uh, it included killing some and finding others and protecting others. And we would always argue when she would describe them as people. She would describe particular entities and races as people, persons. And I would argue back, you know, being young, younger than her, that that was just stupid anthropomorphizing and you can't do that because they're not people you know only humans are people and we would have very energetic arguments that got pretty full on and in the end she would just say you don't know what you're talking about and over many years, I've come to realize that that I think she's right, that maybe the best way to talk about uh, our alien friends or aliens or ETs who are visiting us is to call them people. And I've noted as well that Clifford Stone, who also worked with ETs on Earth, or ETs that were visiting, he also describes them as people. And I just wanted to, um, to just explore that a little bit. I was looking at, at the wiki definition of people and 
Wiki says that uh, people is the plural of persons. And definition for a person is a being such as a human that has certain capacities or attributes constituting personhood. So, is a being. I think if you go by that definition that, um, you know, an alien is a person and aliens are people. And I guess what I like about thinking of aliens as persons and people is one of two things. We do project onto them by using that term. And in a sense, we do anthropomorphize. And I used to think that was a bad thing. But actually, I think the flip side of that anthropomorphizing is that we recognize that they do have um, certain qualities, attributes that make them remarkably like us. And I think anybody will tell you who has um, had a good relationship with these beings that there are a great many similarities between us. There are obviously very many differences, but there are many fundamental similarities. Um, they have a body, uh, particularly those that are humanoid, have two arms, two legs, two hands, two feet, they have a head, they have a brain, they have a heart, they feel, they have emotions, they think, um, they love, they have families, many of them have a belief in God, they have consciousness, they have very real physical bodies and I think that if we're able to think of them as people the real positive to that is we do away with um, we do away with difference we do away with separation with us and them and the kind of xenophobia that uh, you know, it's part of our human heritage to be xenophobic. And xenophobia has led to every bloodshed in human history. And our xenophobia will lead to uh, war with the other in whatever shape or form if we're not careful. So if we use that word person and that word people, I think that we do away with seeing difference and separation and realizing that our alien friends are people just like us. They may have taken a different route in their evolution, but they may have started very similar to us with a great deal of ignorance and that ignorance kept them planet bound for a long time and then eventually they left the planet and i think for for us it's going to be beneficial to try and see them as beings who have a lot in common with us if we cling to the idea that they're vastly different and unsympathetic, uncompassionate to what we are, then we're only going to develop fear and out of that we'll develop hostility towards them. And we'll get highly protective about our earth and the threat that they pose to us. And I would urge you to reconsider that because in, in my experience with 27 different races, they pose no threat at all. We're the only ones that pose a threat. So that's the idea of aliens as people. 
lastly, I would just like to add um, a caveat, if you like. Caveat shouldn't usually come before, but I'll stick this in after. Uh, this discussion about aliens has really been about the concept of aliens that reside in a body. Um, life as we might recognize it. But I would like to say that there are other life forms, um, some of which may be purely energetic, and some of which may be made of fundamental um, elements that we either don't know about or don't recognize as constituting life, such as silicon. I'm aware of a silicon entity that is able to shape shift and take on on any shape that it wishes. Uh, it's currently visiting our planet, has contact with particular government, and some of its ancestors reside on this planet as a terrestrial species, which people would never guess what it was. So there are all these other different forms of, uh, of life that we need to consider we need to ask that fundamental question, what is life? And that will lead us to a much broader understanding of the concept of alien and extraterrestrial. And I'm going to leave more of that exploration for another video, but I hope that I've given you enough to think about here in terms of some basic definitions and broadening your horizons about how you see aliens and extraterrestrials or as I would prefer to say, people from elsewhere. Thanks, and I'll see you in video number two. Take care.